Back in the 1860s, two rail lines joined northeast of Sacramento. That junction became Roseville, California. Tonight, NASCAR's k and Pro Series meets Roseville's All-American Speedway for the 19th time. Welcome to the fairgrounds. The Placer County Fair celebrated 80 years this June, and the All-American Speedway has been here since 1954. That's a good way to get a tour of the place. That's an even better way to arrive. And these drivers, well, they're already on their way up and expecting to entertain tonight at the All-American Speedway. Welcome, everyone, to the Toyota Napa Auto Parts 150 from the All-American Speedway. Dave Burns and Frank started here, and Frank, it's championship time. I can feel it in the air. It's finally cooled down. It's October. Well, I can promise you these drivers can feel the pressure right now. We've got two to go, Dave, and we've got a battle at the top. It certainly is. Chris Eggleston won, then Todd Gilliland won, then Todd finished second last week to extend his championship lead. So it's coming down to the wire here at a third-mile oval in Northern California, located just to the northeast of Sacramento. Should be a good one here tonight. 150 laps, and they won't get a break unless there's a caution. Here's a look at that championship standings. 11 points now back to Eggleston. Well, obviously, Todd Gillen and Chris Eggleston are going to decide this championship. But I'm looking at Michael Self in the fifth spot. He, he got a win in the last race out. If he gets another win here tonight, starting from the pole, he can move himself into third by year's end. That's right. We had qualifying earlier today. Michael Self was the best of everybody, and Heather's with him. Setting a new track record and leading the field to green tonight will be Michael Self. Michael, you told me earlier today that you're terrible at qualifying, but here you are on the pole. What do you think made the difference for you today? Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> to be honest, I'm horrible at qualifying. I'm horrible at qualifying here, so I don't know. Maybe it's a sign of something, but who knows? Uh, I think I think the biggest thing is we just had a really good Sunrise Ford number nine all day. I mean, these guys have been solid here the last couple years and fastest in practice, which is a good thing. Um, and then we were able to back it up. And that's kind of all I had to do to get the pole, so hopefully we can keep it going. Now you're coming off of a win at Meridian Speedway. How much confidence does that give you to go back-to-back -back and get another win yet here tonight? Uh, yeah, it definitely gives you a lot. It gives you a lot of confidence uh, and a lot of motivation and, and help build a lot of chemistry with this team, I think. I think it gave them a lot of confidence, which we kind of needed after being a little bit behind all this year, and um, it, it feels good. It kind of takes the pressure off. You know, we were able to get a win in the, Sun, in the Sinclair car, which is a really, really big deal for me, getting my first, uh, my first win with them this year and so now we gotta try and do it in the sunrise car and just keep the keep the street going well thanks and best of luck to you today michael yeah, thank you that's michael self with his first career poll here in the k n west series heather thanks and michael's poll run just part of a big show at the all-american speedway bill mcanally is actually not just a car owner he promotes this event and has a big tick tonight frank including modifieds and something i had never seen before skid plate racing really just when you thought you'd seen it all day, you, you come to Roseville, and here we go. I can remember going to Oxford Plains, and look at that. No tire, just a piece of steel welded on the bottom. Well, it'll save your tire bill for sure, but then they talk about it being a novelty event and that you're to attempt to race, and they did. They put on a great show. Yeah, this is where, the, you know, we always say four tires, eight tires better than four. Here, <laughs> two is worse than four. You get two and two skid plates. Good <laughs> luck. Well, that's been a part of the evening so far. But, of course, racing in the k and Pro Series West, that man on the pole, and the championship in the picture, that's what it's all about here. Back in the day, well, it was Pauly Haraka territory in that yellow number 12. He won here two years in a row, and this was in 2009. Got a great jump on the field, and then that's Blake Cook in the 21, getting his start in NASCAR. He was spun by Eric Holmes later in the race. Chris Johnson goes around. That was the final yellow. He would recover to finish eighth, but for Mike Curb Racing, it was Polly Haraka in that 12. He would win it again the following year, his last of three wins in the series. But tonight was really about two checkered flags and champagne. Yeah, that guy, Jason Bowles, won the championship for Bob Bruncati, and it was a great night for that group from right here in California. In basketball, we'd call this ball hogging right here because look at Chris Eggleston and Todd Gilliland <laughs> have dominated the season. Kevin Harvick and Michael Self, only other two winners. k and Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by k and High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems because everyone loves that fast car smell. Back in Roseville, California on a cool evening. 
and a fast third mile with a little bit of banking in the turns there, Frank. Yeah, quite a bit of banking here, actually, uh, especially in turns three and four, but a very tight little racetrack here. Just a third of a mile, a short race, just 50 miles, 150 laps tonight. Came from a quarter mile at Meridian in the last race. Now to the third mile, they'll finish out in Kern County in a couple of weeks. So the field getting ready to go. Heather will tell us who we should be keeping our eye on. The driver to watch tonight is going to be the number 99 of Chris Eggleston. He is looking to close that 11-point gap on points leader Todd Gillen. In order to do that, he needs to win the race, lead the most laps, and gain as many bonus points as possible in these final two events. When I spoke to Chris earlier during practice, he said that they tested here at All-American Speedway last week, and they went a little bit backwards from where they should be, so they were working on getting that speed back. He also said this track is unlike any track he's ever been to. He said the harder you drive, the slower you go. So tonight he will be working on patience. He rolls off second. This could be a good night for him right here with the points. You know, Todd Gilliland has had a really good car all year long, but he does not really like this racetrack, doesn't like the shorter racetracks, likes the bigger places. So immediately in his head going into this race, Todd Gilliland's had a little bit of a deficit, and Chris Eggleston can take advantage of that. Got out qualified by his teammate Eggleston, but you saw Michael Self on the pole there. And as Heather told us earlier, a new track record. That nine car is on rails. Sure is. They've really actually had a strong year. Missed the first race of the year and still has moved his way into the top five in points. And reminder, they won this race last year with Ryan Partridge behind the wheel. Green coming out at Roseville. Oh, Chris Eggleston's got a good jump on the outside right there. Immediately using that top groove. Now, they did put down some sticky stuff in the high groove, according to NASCAR, but then, of course, there was skid plate racing, so some of that got rubbed off, but Eggleston knows the way around the top. And guess what, Dave? There he is, one point right there closer to Todd Gillen with leading that lap. Well, and Heather talked about it. He's got a lot to do, Frank. It's a lot on your plate to lead the most, uh, lead a lap, win the race, but can he do it with two to go? 11 points. Hey, he can, absolutely can. I mean, we saw uh, Todd Gilliland lose the championship at the last race of the season with a, with a cut tire at Dover, Delaware a few, few weeks ago when Harrison Burton picked up his first championship. So anything can happen in these races. I mean, hey, these two have been consistent in the top three or four all year long, but you just never know. You look at the last race, and Chris Eggleston had a problem jumping the start. NASCAR penalized him for it. What did he lose? Six or seven points. We could be talking about a three or four point spread right now. Instead, we've got 11 just based. But 150 laps is going to click by quick here. Dave, Matt Levine's around in turn two. Caution on the track. The 10 car of Levine has spun. And now he gets it corrected and is moving down the back stretcher. That's the white car. He had a little bit of help, Dave. All right, we'll get another look at it here. Boy, tough couple of races if you include that for Matt Levine. He destroyed a race car at Meridian. Yeah, I couldn't tell who got into him, but somebody got, was, was making a move on the bottom right there. Get into his left rear just a little bit. Let's see if we can tell. There's Stafford Smith on the bottom right there underneath Matt Levine. Looks like he gets on the curb a little bit right there and just bounces up into them. Just barely gets into Matt Levine. So the good news for Levine is it's not nearly as traumatic as it was at Meridian. That car is still in one piece. He'll restart at the rear and see what he can make out of the night. Chris Eggleston jumped to the lead in the 99 car, had the second fastest qualifying time, and will lead Michael Self, Trevor Christiania. A good start to the night for him. And then championship leader Todd Gilliland and another strong run for Will Rogers. Yeah, great run for Will Rogers early on here. You know, we uh, talked about him earlier. He uh, finished second to Kevin Harvick at Sonoma. He had a great battle he had on the road course there. From that, he decided to go to Watkins Glen and then picked up the win against the K&N East Series. Christiani in the 90 car, a 22-year-old from Ukiah, California. We've seen him a number of times this year. And misfortune, the last race, would like to have a good finish here tonight. Starter has him eyeballed. Green is back out at All-American Speedway. And a good jump for the 99 with a push from his teammate. Really good jump for Todd Gillen right there. You know, I was just going to say that Todd, in a situation like this on the outside of a young driver, he needs to be really patient right here because he doesn't want to get himself in trouble here early on in this race. Self battling back on the inside in the orange nine. Ooh, little wiggle right there. Good grip for the 99 of Eggleston off, but they're still side by side. And Michael Self looks like he's trying to force the issue a little bit heavier here. Wants to get this lead. 
Well, and with that track record, Frank, in qualifying, he knows he's got a great race car. Well, he said it. You know, he listened. He had a great car in practice. I think they led practice, uh, then went out and got the pole. And he even described himself as not a good qualifier. And so when he got the pole, that really was, probably wasn't a very good omen for everybody else in the field. You know, Kenseth used to do that, right? I can't qualify. And then he goes out and gets, sets the pole at Bristol. Yeah, and but goes out and dominates the race, that's right? Exactly right. That's yeah. the thing. Is when a guy that can't qualify does end <laughs> up getting the pole, that means the car really carried him, which means <laughs> they're, everybody else is in big trouble in that race. That's right. You see Gilliland sticking the nose of the 16 down there through one and two. He nudges the 99 out of the way. No love lost between these teammates and a championship on the line. No, but you know what? They've really done a good job all year because as fast as both of them have been, they've had to battle each other as teammates all year long, and mm. they traded some paint like that, <laughs> but they've kept it clean. Can't disagree with that, and for owner Bill McAnally, it's fun to watch his cars battling up at the front. Somewhere back there, the young rookie Derek Krause is trying to find his way forward, and there's a fourth McAnally car entered tonight. We'll talk about Cole Moore at some point, I'm sure, in the 20. We're going to talk about these two a lot tonight as well, Dave. So they settle it for second for now, trying to catch that blue and orange car of uh, Michaels. Oh, and around in turn four is Jonas Fours in the 14. And there he sits. Wow, that was right in front of the leader. Yeah, he looked like he might have had some help from Matt Levine, who got some help in the last caution. So Fours, you see there from Sweden, has worked his way up through the ranks over there and was looking for an opportunity to race here in the United States. And like he's done for so many other drivers here in the West, John Wood came through for him and uh, gave him this opportunity tonight. Well, he's uh, the young man's done a great job in practice here today and uh, qualified. And just and listen, let's see the replay here. But it looked to me like Matt Levine was just trying to be a little bit aggressive, trying to get back up through the field here. You can see a little bit of damage to the nose of the 14 car way up there. Three, Watch three, it down the bottom. Yeah. See him dive bomb in right there. See that car white? That's Matt Levine dive bombing in right there. It's just so tight and hard to do that. And Jonas doesn't really realize he's there at that quick point. Unfortunately, he goes around, gets the short end of the stick. And Levine was just trying to come back through the field after his own spin earlier. And the 10 car had a little bit of contact with the 14. And now Jonas knows what it's like to bring out the caution in NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fortunately, Dave, he's going to be able to continue going on. They got a little bit of damage, but the crew's going to be able to put a little bit of duct tape on that thing, and he's going to get some more experience here tonight, and that's the important thing. Michael Self leads at All-American Speedway. Todd Gilliland trying to chase him down. Track cleanup is complete at the All-American Speedway. Michael Self has again chosen the bottom groove to restart in the nine car. Second place to his outside, Todd Gilliland. There's a cone on the inside there. That's what they're supposed to fire off. Green is back out. Nice launch by the nine. Well, he fired off really good. That's the way he's been accelerating off the corner all night long here early on, Dave. Well, and that may have easily been what helped get him the pole earlier today. And certainly has made him the car to beat here tonight. Yeah, it really looks, the car looks really solid. Looks like he's got very good grip at the rear tires. Turns the center really good. Eggleston a little squirrely behind him battling Julia Landauer for third. She's moved up now. And, boy, she's sideways off the corner, too. Yeah, we knew she'd move up, though, didn't we? Every race we've seen her, wherever she qualifies, she always moves forward. Will Rogers looking for a way on the outside in that black number seven. He doesn't get it. And down on the inside, that's the 90 of Trevor Cristiani, leading laps at his home track last race at Meridian. That was really something to see, Heather. When I asked Trevor earlier today what it was like to lead those laps at his home track of Meridian, he said that it felt really good. It was a great feeling to be able to do that in just his fifth start in the k and West Series. He also told me he learned a lot that race, mainly that these drivers race hard from lap one, and that's something that Trevor is not used to. Tonight, his goal is to get a top 10 and just load it on the trailer. So far, he's running strong in the top five. I'll tell you what, Dave, I watched that race in Meridian. You know, it's impressive. He didn't just lead a lap under the caution or something. He right. led over 15 laps in that race. And when you look at we talked about it, we joked about it a little bit, the, the ball hogging that we've had going on with Chris Eggleston and Todd Gilliland dominating all these races and getting all the wins, to go out there and lead laps against them, very impressive, just fifth, sixth race into this in his young career. Yep, and it was a learning experience for sure. Rode up on that outside wall, just got a little bit squirrely in the car, and they've got it back together and running in the top five tonight. And that's what he needs to do, you know, continue to be there in the top five week in and week out. And next thing you know, the wins will come. 
All right, so the leaders, the nine of Self, the 16 of Gilliland, no tire change in this race, Frank. 150 laps, just a third mile course. What's happening here now between these two? Well, Todd's putting a lot more pressure on, really, than I think that I would expect this early on, you know, based on not being able to put tires on. Um, he feels obviously really good about his race car, and he's trying to go up there and, uh, and make Michael Self wear his tires out. Eggleston has settled back for now. Saw the battle there of Will Rogers in the seven getting some pressure as well. And the crowd loving this. We talked about how the McAnally teammates battle each other, but this is great short track racing. Oh, it's been great short track racing all year long. And yeah, you know, you mentioned that. That's the one thing I will say is that Todd Gilliland and Chris Eggleston, all year long, there's no been no team rules. Those two have battled it out, put on a great show for the fans. You didn't know who was going to win or who was going to beat the other competitor every night, every race that we've seen all year long. I'm seeing here too, Frank, in three and four, watch Self's number nine. He enters just a little bit higher. Didn't do it that time, of course, but I've been noticing that Gillen is way down on the bottom and Self has been a little bit higher on his line. Well, Michael Self has got a much better arc going into the corner, Dave, and that is helping him roll through the center and then drive off straighter off of the corner. You look at Todd right there, you're right. He goes in straight and then see how the nose pushes a little bit mm -hmm. right there? He, his car isn't balanced well enough for him to arc into the corner the way he wants to. Michael Self's car looks to me like it's on a set of rails right now. Putting a lap on the 18 of Bill Kahn. They'll get around Jonas Fors as well on that. Oh, no, that wasn't. Yeah, that was him in the white 14. And look at this battle back there. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Derek Kraus in a mess back there trying to hold down his position. Yeah, that was Nicole Bihar in there. You know she's going to be heading, heading towards the front. Kraus running seventh, Bihar running eighth, and Cole Moore in the 20. We mentioned him earlier running a Bill McAnally car back in that mix as well. So a lot of young drivers we've heard from this year as we get to know the K&N Pro Series. This time, it's time to hear from Blaine Perkins. Hi, I'm Blaine Perkins, driver of the number 21, four-star fruit, Golden Gate Meat Company, Chevrolet. I started racing when I was about 10 years old, and I started in go-karts and worked my way up throughout the series uh, into bandoleros, legend cars, and into full-size stock cars. Um, when I was 14, I became the youngest winner in Irwindale history, and that's really where my career started skyrocketing to the k and Pro Series. I like racing in the k and Pro Series because it's just a full, uh, full field of competition. The drivers in this series are amazing, and they'll definitely be somewhere in NASCAR within the next few years. My goal in the Canaan Pro Series is to just finish the races, try to run up front if we can, and I think we've got a good few races coming up for us. Hi, I'm Blaine Perkins, and that's your NASCAR Next Gen Profile. I think he's got a future, and he's a first-generation racer, too. You know, he watched races on TV with his dad and started going to indoor karting, and from there it was on. Uh, I think... Once you get a taste of it, Frank, and you're a kid and you're in a race car, man, you got to love it. Well, he certainly loves it, and I think his family loves it. And he's done a great job, you know, moving up from division to division. He's, this is only his second year in the K&N West. And here's the deal. The K&N West Series is so tough to win races at because you've got teams like Bob Brugatti racing, who's dominating the, the night tonight with, with uh, Michael Self driving the car, Bill McAnally racing. They, they, they've been out here on all these tracks for so many years with so many different drivers that it's very tough to come out with a new driver and a new team and try to beat them in year one or year two. I look for Blaine Perkins to really move up next year. As Steve Portengay is his crew chief and car owner, so a little bit of knowledge of the West there behind him. As we check in on this battle for fourth, Trevor Cristiani has been holding off Will Rogers. Will, not a traditional oval racer through his coming up, has really started to adapt in that seven car late in the season. Yeah, he really has. We've seen, obviously, as you said, he's done a tremendous job on the road races, but what he's really trying to do is get better on the ovals, and he has done that as the year has progressed. Back up front, this is for second. Eggleston now has reeled in the 16 of Gilliland. And look at the interesting move right here, Dave. He's going on the outside. We mentioned before, they did put a little bit of substance down there to help get a little bit of grip in that top line. Eggleston, very, very good on the small tracks. As we mentioned, maybe not Todd's cup of tea, and his teammate gets around. Wow, that was an impressive move right there. And you, 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 we mentioned it earlier, 30 laps into the race, we questioned whether Todd Gilliland was a little, putting a little bit too much pressure on early on Michael Self, and now we wonder whether his tires are already starting to fade. Third of the way through the 150 laps here tonight, 
in Roseville, California. Great evening. Uh, nice temperatures. Good crowd on hand. They've seen a show that includes modifieds, bombers, skid plate racing, and now the big, t well, I don't know, fireworks later. That might be the big ticket. But the NASCAR k &M Pro Series with Michael Self leading. Well, there's fireworks in front of Michael Self right yeah. now because he's in a lot of lap traffic. Oh, and they get in trouble trying to stay on the lead lap. They spin right in front of this group. That's Hollis Thackeray in the 86. And Todd Susan, the 13, I think, went around with him, Dave. Oh, my. So Thackeray gets it corrected, and Souza, who had qualified 11th, tried to hang on, but he went around too. Yeah, both of them didn't get it corrected in time, but what they're going to be a lap down right now. So caution out on the speedway. We have a couple of looks at it, actually, because our speed shot looks back that way. I think that's the second replay. We'll get a first look here. Hollis is having a problem getting his started right here, Dave. He may need to have a push. You can see he's... He could go a second lap down. All right, the white car on the inside, you see him diving down there, trying to get below Blaine Perkins and Todd Souza. And it looks like the 86 just comes around. Yeah, I think the 86 drove in a little bit too too hard. He was driving in past Blaine Perkins. Maybe maybe got on the brakes a little bit too hard, and the back end started to come around. There's the look back from the speed shot, looking long range. Looks like Hollis's rear end starts to come around. He gets into Todd Souza, and, and unfortunately takes Todd, Todd Souza out as well. Ooh. Look at the leader, Michael Self. Wow. Good evasive move getting the nine through that. Wow, the spotter just, his his heart, heart rate went up right there, Dave. But that's the kind of thing that can happen on the short track. Dominating run by Michael Self, and all of a sudden, chaos in front of you. Yeah, that's why you've got to watch out on these short tracks. The one-third mile, 24 cars out here tonight. It is exciting. All right, they'll catch their breath. We'll catch ours, and then we'll see if anybody can catch Michael Self. Roseville, California, a historic rail town northeast of Sacramento. And it's been the location of the All-American Speedway since 1954. This is actually the 19th race that the k and Pro Series has had here. Started with Michael Self on the pole, Matt Levine with an early spin, and then Self asserting himself, reasserting himself, Frank, back to the point. Yeah, using a lot of racetrack right there to get by Chris Eggleston. And then look at this. What a move right here around Todd Souza and Hollis Thackeray spinning in front of him. And that's where we stand. Self able to maintain control of that nine car, get through the smoke, and he will be on the inside again as the control car on this restart. You know, this is going to be interesting. We saw Chris Eggleston at the start of the race. He was able to get the lead from the outside. We just saw him pass Todd Gillen on the outside. Can he do it again to Michael Self? Better start this time for Eggleston, and he pulls up alongside the nine. Down the back stretch, will self use the car? He doesn't fade out too far, and Eggleston hangs in there. Eggleston just doesn't have quite enough right there, though. Nope, not enough grip there, and cleanly through and back to the front, Michael Self. Behind him, not so clean. <laughs> back to about fifth place there. That is the 90 of Cristiani trying to hold off to Cole Bihar now, who has got that 33 car wound up. And Julia Landauer on the bottom right there, trying to get back by Derek Krause. So 76 of 150, just crossing the halfway point. There was no specific halfway break, although the caution sort of fell that way. And we should tell the folks at home, just tuning in, there was no halfway break. We just happened to have that caution, as you said. So no tires. Same tires all night long here tonight, folks. And those tires will get a little bit more slippery as time goes on. You see the 19 car there of Derek Krause behind his teammates up front, the 16 of Gilland and the 99 of Eggleston. Boy, Will Rogers is starting to put some pressure on Todd Gilland. We talked about it earlier. Did Todd Gilland go a little too hard early? You know, you're looking right now, Chris Eggleston's got that extra point for leading a lap. Todd Gillen has not led a lap tonight, and he's also got a point on him from being in front of him right now. That would close the gap to nine points going into the last race. Watch Rogers here. That was a, yeah, I did it a little bit different this time. That was a funny last corner for Rogers. It's like he had to stand on the brakes, Frank. I almost thought he was either diamonding the corner or he missed it. I think he's doing everything he can to try to find the fastest way around this racetrack. This is a fun thing about this track, Dave. With all that banking in the corners right there, you can diamond in a little bit and shoot off the corner. Continuing to watch. Look the at Todd right there. He's, yep. he's making that move. Well, and they're following the guy who has had maybe the biggest arc into the corner all night long, the nine of self. And, and whatever he's doing is working, but the rest of them cannot seem to duplicate it. Good look from our speed shot right there. Michael Self's pole time, close to 90 miles per hour on average. They really get around this place. And speaking of getting around this place, Dave, how about Nicole Bihar? She's moved into the top five, started eighth tonight, 
one of the biggest movers of the night, and she's starting to put some pressure on Will Rogers. See her in that yellow car. They're so disappointed up at Meridian the last race. They had a fuel pump issue in the 33 and did not finish that event. Much better night here for Nicole. Yeah, sure is early on. We've still got a long ways to go. Oh, boy. Uh, tell that to Todd. A uh, <laughs> little bumper action there to Chris Eggleston. Gillen trying to find that way by. He does know their teammates, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, and you got to wonder what Will Rogers is thinking right behind him. You guys go ahead and... Hey, he's excited. Duke that out. I'm going to look to the low line if wow, you guys... some more bumper. Yep. Todd says he wants by. He wants that second spot. Well, you know, listen, again, the pressure right now, the points. To what Todd really wants by is he wants by Chris Eggleston, and he wants to get at least one lap up at the front tonight. If, so if it was a restart and he could happen to just get the lead for one half a lap at the, at the start-finish line to get that point back that he knows Chris Eggleston has on him right now. The championship lead coming into tonight, 11 points for the 16 over the 99, and two races to go tonight, and then the finale at Kern County. Bakersfield, California. That'll be a good one, too. Will Rogers is saying, hey, guys, I'm, I want to go by you two. Rogers looking low in the seven for Jefferson Pitts Racing. He's really putting that low line to work now and making it work. Yeah, he sure is, but Hollis Thackeray's around on the front stretch, Dave. Spinning right in front of us, the 86 of Thackeray again with trouble. There is, You see him right there at the start-finish line, that white car. Yeah, he came right off turn four and looks like he lost, lost rear grip. Uh, we're going to get a couple looks at it here, see if... We know he had a little bit of help. Well, sorry. He, he was the help earlier when they were trying to stay on the lead lap. And we'll see what befell him this time. I thought he looked like he was on his own right there, but not sure. Field back under caution again, and that will bring everyone back to Michael Self. And Todd Gilliland now in second, having gotten back around Eggleston. You got to know Michael Self. He doesn't want to see these cautions. So right there off the corner. Yeah, he just he just loses it on his own right there. He's just on the bottom right there, getting the gas a little bit too hard. You know, good. And hasn't been in these cars a whole lot. And it's just as the grip goes away in these tires later in the run, if you stay on that gas the same amount that you did at lap one, you're going to go around. He was working on the 32 of Cody Vanderwall. Vanderwall got off the corner extremely well. Hollis Thackeray, not so much. Under caution. The field has gathered behind Michael Self. We'll be back with more. The track is ready. It's the All-American Speedway. The drivers are ready. That's Michael Self in the orange and blue nine. He's the control car again, as he's been most of the night, dominating here. Chris Eggleston to his outside in the black 99. Another, Green flag is back out. Another great jump by Michael Self. It certainly was. We're calling that a launch now, I think, because he gets such good drive in the nine car. Yeah, he really does a good job there on those restarts. But look at Eggleston battling back strong now right there. Wow, look at the difference. Yeah, his car is just turning so much better in the middle of the corner and can just drive off. And everybody else is in their car having to wait on the gas a little bit. Can't quite get to the throttle. If they do get to the throttle too soon, rear tires are spinning. Well, think about that for self. Gaining confidence now, having won the last race. The team gaining confidence in him. They understand each other, Frank. This end of the year, so much better than the start, which was a surprise to Michael Self. Yeah, listen, they, they would like this, this season to continue on right now. They don't yeah. want it to end. I mean, they're sitting there saying, oh, there's two races to go. We're going to win. We hope to win this one and possibly win the next one. Let's just continue this thing right through Christmas. Well, and think how the year started. The nine car was run by Zane Smith at the opening event of the year, and then Self jumped in. Self was actually spotting that day for Zane and helping coach him. Well, everybody was shocked by Ryan Partridge not being in the car, and then for whatever reason, you know, they, they, they had to jump and grab Zane Smith, throw him in there for a week, and then when they, when they got and evaluated what they wanted to do, they felt like Michael Self going forward was the best thing for them. Michael had raced in the series before, had a bit of an ARCA program put together already, so he was ready to go and got in there for Bob Brumcotti, has done a solid job all year, and then finally broke through to victory lane, the last race at Meridian. And I think every race he's run, Dave, he's been in the top ten. So that's pretty impressive, you know, to not know the, the team at all going into it, jump in, and now we're sitting here and he's leading this race after just winning la uh, the last race out in Meridian. Uh, nothing but top tens. Really good job by this young man. Will Rogers in the seven car sandwich. Tough to swallow, but you just need to move on. During practice, he said they're working on their drive off and trying to get underneath people. So keep an eye on the 19. He is still searching for his first win in the K&N West Series. 
You know what impresses me, Frank? Uh, he's in high school, in a public high school in Stratford, Wisconsin. The other guys, Eggleston is, you know, out of high school by a long shot, and Todd Gillen has kind of a homeschool thing going on. He's gotten a lot of cooperation from his teachers. Well, he sure has, and I'm sure, you know, he's hey, listen, he's done the homework in advance, but, you know, you're right. Absolutely is great uh, that the school is letting him work with it, work with his teachers to get the studies done, but be able to go do what his dream is and, and try to ascertain that. Just turned 16 years old, did Krause, and I, I asked him, you went out and got your driver's license right I guess it's a probationary license at 16 in Wisconsin he said oh yeah and I passed my driver's test the first time <laughs> you, you think, would hope right you think he did a couple 360 spins <laughs> maybe, maybe later when the instructor wasn't looking uh, he'd like to be doing them in victory lane sideways into the parallel oh, parking Oh, that's sideways right there and almost parallel park the seven into the wall did Todd Gilliland Gilliland now with the fender of the 16 underneath Will Rogers. You know, I was just getting ready to say earlier, too, that Will Rogers is impressive that he had gotten by Todd Gilliland. Now Todd's trying to get back by him, but another tremendous job by Will Rogers right here. And there's Derek Krause. We've talked about him. Listen, he's got the pressure right now. He's wanting to get going up through this field a little bit because he sees Michael Self up there. I'm sure the spotters told him if Michael Self goes on to win this race, it could be four or five point separation to try to get the third third and points. And Derek Krause really wants to get a one, two, three for Bill McAnally Racing in the final points. That's a really good point. And look at that contact coming off the corner. Not afraid to use a little bit of the fender, and he'll get by Rogers. He may not get his he may get his license revoked if his teacher sees that. <laughs> Hopefully they're not looking. Yeah, I talked to Derek about, uh, he, he also runs a late model at home still, had a great summer, but did not win. He said, I finished second seven times. He, he's beginning to feel like the Chase Elliott of super late model racing up in Wisconsin. I was going to say Harry Gann. Oh, that happened to Harry a lot too, that right? Was, yeah. Well, and Bill Elliott finished, I think it was eight times finished second before he ever won at the cup level. That may be a good omen then. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good company right there to be in. Just going to say, Derek knows his history, and he knows he's going to have a long one here in the K&N Pro Series. Right now, the night belongs to Michael Self. Oh, this long green flag stretch continues at the All-American Speedway, and it's winding down now, 27 to go. This is like a little feature on a big night of racing at All-American. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, Dave, that Michael Self doesn't want to see the, probably doesn't want to see these cautions, but actually right now, I'm thinking he may want to see a caution because he's in some heavy lap traffic, and trying to get up to this lap traffic is difficult. Looking here at the teammates, as we've seen them all night battling, still for second, 99 Eggleston, 16 Gilliland. And we've seen them both have the advantage at different times, sometimes because of a little contact, they get close again. You know, my point is that it is much more difficult, Dave, for the leader to get through lap traffic than it is for second and third. Because when we saw it earlier, when Todd Souza and, and Hollis Thackeray spun out, they were trying to stay in the lead lap. They're, they're going to fight everything they can tooth and nail to keep that leader behind them. Once the leader gets by, you relax a little bit and you're, and you're like, OK, I lost my lap. You know, I'm not really going to hold second and third up. And, and all of a sudden, that two, two second gap that Michael Self's got right now closes up quickly. So with all the advantages that a leader has, that's one time they really are disadvantaged. They are disadvantaged. Yep. Down the backstretch one more time. Gilliland looking for a way through. Has had the 16 close to the 99 here in the waning laps. 20 to go now for leader Michael Self in this battle. They've definitely decided to use just nothing but the upper groove in turns one and two. Down to the inside again. Gilliland looking. And Eggleston fighting back. Now, Todd's trying to get by. He really wants this point right here. This would make him equal on points if they could finish in front of him tonight. Oh, Chris is trying to hang on, but for the moment, look at those brake rotors glow. And now the crossover move for Eggleston. And he's in there. How far will he carry it? Lots of space between the two. Different lines taken. Now Gilliland's going to clear outright. What a battle. Shame this isn't for the lead right here, but Michael Self, he's thrilled it's not for the lead. He's, he's out there set sail. That's right, and that's not Self right in front of them. You can see that's the six of Julia Landauer, his teammate. Yeah, she's actually got a fresh tire on there now, Dave. We, we didn't talk about it, but she's a, she's a few laps down because they had to come and change the tire. That's right, had to leave the, the circuit. The pits are out back and came back down, and she is definitely laps down to this group here, trying to fight back. I wasn't sure exactly what she had for a problem until Heather came back and, and uh, let us know what it was, but it was a tire that went down. And now will he take him three wide off the corner? Not quite, but Eggleston looking for a way by. This is fantastic. 
Look at the points right now. 11 back as they run. So that's exactly what the night started. Nose to tail, second and third, first and second in the championship. And they're losing ground right now to the leader. They're almost three seconds back from get, trying to get through this lap traffic. And really, not so much the lap traffic, battling themselves. That's right. They've now lost track of the leader. Egg Eggleston knows how important this is. He's got two races to get 11 points back. This one, and in a couple weeks at Kern County. Yeah, he does not want to finish behind Todd Gilliland tonight, that's for sure. Working to the inside of Hollis Thackeray there in the 86. He's had an adventurous night. Gets a little nudge from the 16 on the way by. And so low is the 99 of Eggleston. Remember, Chris is very, very good on these tight, tight tracks. And he's, he's had a lot of success. And he's very good on the outside, too. Early in the, early in the night, he was able to do that. But tonight, seems like that second groove now has, has come in so well that he's not able to get on the outside of Todd Gilliland. Now Gilliland looking to get away and has lit a little bit of daylight now between himself and his teammate. Biggest problem that Chris Eggleston's got now is so much lap traffic, he's not able to get beside Todd Gilliland because Todd's going to have somebody beside him almost every lap here trying to get through traffic. Ten to go to decide second place here. Ten to go for Michael Self trying to win two in a row, Frank. That'll be impressive for Bob Brunkati Racing, for how the season started, for Michael Self to get in there. What an accomplishment to win two in a row. And we talked about it, really two in a row against these two young men, Todd Gillen and Chris Eggleston, as strong as they've been all year long. Very impressive. See, they're now getting by the 90 of Cristiani. That car fading just a little bit in the later laps here at All-American Speedway. But Eggleston is not losing sight of his teammate. Trying to see if Todd will make a mistake or if he can just get a good run on him coming off one of these corners. I just don't think he has enough grip in his rear tires now to make, be able to make a pass on the bottom. And if, and if Todd sticks, continues to run the high line in one and two and doesn't let Chris go on the outside of him, I don't believe he'll be able to get by him, Dave. Next time by for Michael Self, it'll be five to go. And working lap traffic again is the leader out ahead of this duo. And he's got a big enough lead now that he can work through this traffic. All he's praying for right now is no cautions. See Todd now working under the 36 of Jesse Awuji. And Todd's got to pick his spots pretty well here, too, because Eggleston's right there. Well, he's got to be smart about where he passes these, these drivers because you're right. He doesn't want to do it in the middle of the corner. He needs to do it down the straightaway and try to get a, a car in between he and Chris Eggleston every time he makes a pass. See the 27 there of Max Tolman with a good night. Haven't talked about him, but having a strong run for Jefferson Pitts Racing. And there's our leader, set sail. Yes, he does. Three to go as he crosses the start-finish line this time. There you see. And he's got, what, five, six cars in between him and second place? Nice little cushion there for the leader. Coming down. Oh, and now in heavy lap traffic, Eggleston still looks for a way by. And they're two and three wide in front of him. The teammates, Levine in the 10, Norman in the 40, and then Tolman in the 27. He gets a little bit of the chrome oh, horn. Almost disaster for Todd Gilliland right there. Gilliland gathers it back up, and Eggleston's right there. Wow. Wow, his teammate gave him a, gave him a break right there. He could have gone around very easily into the infield. Coming to the white flag for Michael Self. There it is. And he's got lap traffic in front of him. And he needs to just be patient here. Don't try to go by Todd Souser and Blaine Perkins. Just ride around this final lap. He will follow them across, but he will be the winner. Michael Self is going to win for the second race in a row in the K&N West Series. And to the line, Gilliland is going to hold off Eggleston. Wow. Wow. Wow, that could have been big. Oh, <laughs> Eggleston, he just drives it right off the track. Oh, he can't be happy with what happened there. Did not gain on his teammate tonight, and it was an opportunity. No, but he didn't lose. He didn't lose because he did get that crucial point of leading a lap early. But what a, what a drive for this young man right here. It certainly is. And for Eggleston, I was thinking, Frank, you call that glass half full. For Michael Self, it's a full glass. He won tonight at All-American Speedway. It's overflowing. How out front you were, and what was the key to the speed that you had tonight? Well, first off, it didn't feel easy. Um, yeah, I knew we had a big car. You know, my spotter would tell me, you know, half a straightaway to a straightaway. And at the end there, it was just all about lap traffic. I mean, it was so busy with 24 cars out there. It was just getting by those guys and making sure they didn't, didn't hold us up at all and just praying for uh, – for no caution, just to go green. I mean, these, uh, these Sunrise Ford guys 
just gave me a phenomenal car all day and the way this car turned the center but but kept drive off the corners just let us do that tonight um and was just balanced the whole night and that's that's what you look for uh, that's the best short track car i've ever driven right there this thing was absolutely phenomenal congratulations thank you that's michael self with his eighth win in the KN west series well, that's one young man that wants this season to go on forever. And Chris Eggleston and Todd Gillen are hoping Michael Self doesn't show up at Kern County. Something tells me that car has already entered, and he's looking for three in a row. Good top ten runs for Perkins, Vanderwall, and Tolman. Tough break for Trevor Cristiani. Fall all the way to 15th after having a top five run after leading laps the previous race. Wanted more than that tonight. Yes, yeah, same for Todd Souza. Finished fourth at Meridian, 11th here tonight. And Julia Landauer with the tire issues leaves her 21st. Here's Heather with second place. Finishing second tonight is Todd Gill. And Todd, I know it's hard for you to kind of hold back and not drive hard. And at this track, that's something that you need to work on. But it looked like you gave it everything you got there. Do you think that you may have driven too hard and used up any of your stuff at the end? Um, maybe a little bit. Um, it's always tough to see that lead, you know, within reach. It's, you can't quite get there. And um, yeah, that's what uh, the nine car had us tonight. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, you know, he just had a really good drive off. But um, yeah, that's something we can learn from. And um, I'm really excited to get back on on a bigger track at Kern, um, you know, where you can really attack it. Um, you know, this was a, it was a really fun race tonight, right in Bill McNally's backyard. So, um, you know, to finish, I think, second, third, and fourth um, with our Bill McNally racing cars is, is a solid night. Um, you know, obviously, we, we like getting the wins, but, um, you know, like I said, we can uh, we can learn a lot from this one and uh, move on to last uh, last points race. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Well, the last points race is going to be in Kern County. He's got three weeks to think about it, Dave, and this young man could be possibly back-to-back -back champion. And you see back there for third, Derek Krause, just a couple of points now over Rogers and Self. Well, we've got two distinct battles we're going to have at Kern County. Yeah. Who's going to win the championship between Todd Gillen and Chris Eggleston? And who's going to get third in the points, Derek Krause, Will Rogers, or Michael Self? Tonight, third went to Eggleston. Bringing it home third tonight is Chris Eggleston. Chris, there at the end, we saw you and Todd trying to get through. It looked like four lapped cars. How wild was that race for you tonight? It was crazy. I hope the fans got felt like they got their money's worth. Um, it's just weird. I just felt like we didn't really have a great balance all, all day. Uh, it's a bummer being here in Bill McAnally's backyard, not getting a W. Congrats to Michael. But thank everybody with uh, Napa filters, Napa belts and hoses, Trico welding supply, NGK spark plugs, H2O fire protection. Uh, I thought we were going to have a solid run there. Got to, got to lead some laps, got at least one of the bonus points, and we rolled by Todd on the outside. And I thought we were gonna. I thought we were better on the longer runs um, than the shorter runs. And then the brakes started going, and then you had to baby it. And we found the outside groove there for a little bit. And I guess we just came home a little short. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, you know, you, you can see, you can hear the disappointment in the yep. young man. And I don't think he's more disappointed with the third place tonight because I think it, that was okay. I really think he's disappointed with Meridian two weeks ago when he got the penalty mm. and he's lost six or seven points to Todd Gillen right there. He's looking at it saying, boy, I wish I was just four points back going into the final at Kern. It's going to be a good one. We mentioned the two battles. Boy, we had one colossal battle here tonight for second place. Michael Self, though, had the field covered from the start, Frank. Well, he sure did. He said that he was a horrible qualifier. Yeah. So that really alerted the field that if he's on the pole, everybody else is in big trouble tonight. Eggleston led the first 13, and then it was all Michael Self, 14 to 150. All belonged to the driver of the nine car. And for the second race in a row, he is in victory lane. Thanks to Frank and to Heather, I'm Dave Burns. Thank you for watching Michael Self win at All-American Speedway.